Hey everyone, time for a little more Q&A. So the first question we've got is, how much has Earth's magnetic field weakened up to right now? I wish there was a great way to answer that question, but the best way we can do that is to guess. And here's what we know, what we don't have to guess about. We know that from about 1859 up to the year 2000, we lost about 10% of Earth's magnetic field. Now, 10 years later in 2010, the European Space Agency's SWARM mission updated that to 15%. So we lost about 10% in 150 years. And then we lost another 5% in only a decade. And there was an accompanying article that went with that where Rune Flobergog in the previous at that time, head of the SWARM mission said we had gone from losing about 5% per century to about 5% per decade. Now here we are in 2022, which would mean that we are down to at least 20%, maybe 25% down. If there has been another significant acceleration in that field loss, it hasn't been tremendous. Uh, but I would say somewhere between you know 22, 25, maybe as much as 27 or 28% down in the magnetic field. Uh, concurrent with that, when will things start to get really noticeable in terms of the weather, the seismicity, the volcanoes, uh, the technological effects, the biosphere effects? I would argue we are already there. We are already seeing a lot of the biological effects as you probably have uh, seen in some of the videos that we've been talking about recently, specifically the ones called World Going Crazy. Um, I would have to imagine, though, for those who are wondering when it will be the kind of thing where the entire world can't help but notice, maybe somewhere around 35 to 40 percent down. And, you know, of course, that would that would still be a little bit of a ways away. Uh, people have been asking about mass hallucinations during the magnetic excursion in the micronova and other things that might happen during the micronova. It is really hard to wrap one's head around exactly how bad the psychological, the mental, the emotional effects are going to be during the zenith of this disaster. For all we know, the entire world could just go crazy for a couple of days. Um, people's memory could be inaccessible to their, their consciousness for, for a little bit of time. There's really no way to know the answer to that, but I would suggest that if you understand how bad things are now, and of course, that is a combination of not only space energy hitting the planet more with a weaker field, not only the geomagnetic field that we live in changing, but also uh, the things people stuck in their arms, the overall stressful nature of the planet, all these things coming together. Um, I'm not sure I would rule out anything at this point in terms of biophysical effects or psychological effects when the big one happens. Uh, and I guess that would include hallucinations, although something tells me if we get that, it probably wouldn't be the fun kind. Let's say you are not underneath the flash of the micronova. A piece of the micronova shell doesn't hit you and a volcano doesn't uh, pop up right next to you. Your land doesn't sink into the sea. You get lucky. Now, I've often said one of the greatest slaps to the universe, fate, or God, if that's how you choose to see it, one of the greatest slaps to that person who had made you so lucky or fate that made you so lucky would be to give you that luck and then you're not prepared to actually deal with what's coming. Uh, and so let's say you do get super lucky. What are the biggest things you have to worry about? These are going to be uh, climate related, whether that's temperature, lightning, wind, hail. These are some of the reasons why having an appropriate shelter is important. These are some of the reasons why not overly relying on electrical uh, devices is so important. Uh, this is one of the reasons why having a greenhouse that is built into the ground isn't a terrible idea, or at least built into the side of a hill. Uh, the wind, the hail, the lightning should be pretty fantastic. Maybe even something like uh, the Catatumbo storms uh, whenever a storm rolls past you. Uh, tornadic level winds whenever the wind rolls past you. Now, this is not a constant thing you're going to be dealing with day in and day out, 24 hours a day. Let's say you get lucky in that circumstance, but these are things that you're going to have to deal with if you are one of those individuals who gets lucky. So something to consider there. What causes the solar micronova? Now, this is interesting because we've gone over several aspects of what's happening right now. And there are actually multiple ways we can see this triggered. And to be honest, I have to think it's a combination of them. 
The number one way they believe that nova events are triggered is by accumulation of material in the outer atmosphere of the star. In the case of our sun, we call that the corona. Uh, we have the extra dust coming in from the galactic current sheet, the extra particles coming in from the galactic current sheet, and that's gonna be part of it. But I actually think that's going to be enhanced by a reduction of the solar wind output, uh, the, the luminosity, and things like that, because as we get the galactic magnetic reversal, the electrical processes on the surface of the sun that create the brightness, that create the luminosity, that create the outflowing solar wind should be subdued a little bit. And so we have less outward flow, and at the same time, we have more dust and more, uh, more stuff accumulating out on the surface. Uh, now, just that alone, would be enough to sort of block the pressure vent, so to speak, and then pressure builds and builds and builds inside until the outer covering isn't able to contain that pressure anymore. But also, after the galactic magnetic reversal, the sun kicks back into gear, and all of a sudden, it's not at a reduced uh, you know, luminescence. It's not at reduced electrical activity. It's not at uh, a reduced solar wind output. And so that sort of can blast off the outer shell as well. I happen to believe that and you don't have to believe this, you could pick one or the other if you actually feel like you need to pick one thing. Uh, I think it is a confluence of circumstances that can actually have that effect. Um, we have seen instances where a magnetic disruption alone was enough to trigger a nova on a star and a galactic magnetic reversal was a magnetic disruption, if nothing else. Last thing we wanna hit here today and I can't believe we're actually going to do this. The first time, uh, the first dozen or so times I've seen this pop up, my reaction was, ha, that's kind of funny, but no. Um, it's not stopping. This question's not stopping. The comments about it, the emails about it aren't stopping. And they are, should there be something like a suspicious observer's dating app? Now, this is not something I really want to get involved in or I really want to spearhead. But if any of you can think of a way that that something like that could work, I guess I kind of have to admit that with the breakdown of society, with the breakdown of relationships and a turning of the seasons, so to speak, um, in a more metaphorical scale, it's really not that terrible of an idea to get better connected, if not necessarily for relationships or dating, just to have those connections with other observers like that. It's hard to do in the comment section unless you show up at one of the events. Uh, it's hard to necessarily meet other observers. And even if you do show up at one of the events, you know, we don't have events where every single suspicious observer shows up. And so um, I don't think I'd like to call it necessarily a dating thing because uh, Again, I don't really want to get into that at all. But if anybody has an idea, a way where something like profiles or, or something like that could be put together where observers could actually just meet other observers, even just for the purpose of connecting with them in their own region. Like, let's say they want to know if there's any observers who live in their city who are also preppers, things like that. Um, I suppose if we set up something like that, individuals who are more concerned about the dating could actually use it for that. But again, I'm not going to spearhead something like that. If somebody has a great way to do it, they're willing to undertake it and they have a good plan and they put something excellent together, I would support the connection of observers outside of this forum, uh, the YouTube channel where we are right now. Um, I would say that is about it for the, for the time being. I want you to keep uh, eyes open for more events that we're going to be planning uh, in the winter time and in the spring time. Uh, we're going to be doing these events uh, where you guys can actually come out and see us probably once every month or two until Observer Ranch is actually up and ready to go, at which point they're all coming to me. Uh, that's, that's where we'll leave it for the time being. I will see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.